just on paper, Sean, there's nothing about my history, my education, my credentials that would have told you that one day I was going to be the an award-winning editor for a national business magazine. On paper, nothing, none of it makes sense. I'm so happy you said that. I'm so happy that you said that because people, okay, you talk about the hiring process, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm happy you said it because there's somebody out there now who has all of the qualifications of a winner except for the mindset and the belief. Yes, yes. Typically, it's because they're looking to their left and to their right, and they see all of these other people who are more accomplished on paper, but they don't have that winning spirit. They don't have that thing inside of them, which is, will eventually make them into something great. So I'm so happy you pointed that out. Yeah. Comparison, and this, this go, you know, it applies to entrepreneurship, it really applies to everything. And it's, it, these are seeds plant, planted in us, unfortunately, even as, as, we're, as children, you know. Can, can I ask you another question? Oh, I'm sure. sorry. I didn't realize um, you were still no. um, going with that point. Go ahead. Well, what I'm saying is that the minute you're told that if, you, if you're not good at something the first time you do it, then you're not supposed to do it. That's a bad thing. It, or you're told you, that you did that, but Sally did it better. And that's plants a seed in your mind. Well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this because I can't do it as well as Sally. Comparison kills more dreams and blunts more potential than anything. And, and the, the blessing that I had growing up is my mother, and I don't know if she was conscious of it or not. I can't remember any time telling my mother I wanted to do something, my mother saying, maybe you can't do that. I mean, she literally believed I could do anything, which made me think, I guess I can, because everything my mother, I mean, I'm a firstborn child, so there was, I'm a mama's boy. And before the rest of the world could start telling me or convincing me of what I couldn't do, she planted enough of a seed that as I got old, I started, you know, now people think I'm great, but maybe not really, I think I'm crazy, but I can literally do anything. I can do what I, it's about what I want to do. It's not about whether I can do it. So, so that, this, this whole seed. Right there. Picking up right there, right? You said comparison kills more dreams. Yes. And, 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 and you also said your mother planted the seeds in you that you can do anything. But she lived up to it because everybody tells their kids that. But then, they, but then they say something or a teacher will say something that contradicts that. And, and there were other people in my life who did too, but because I held my mother's opinion above everybody else's, fortunately I didn't get totally destroyed by these other comparisons and these things about what I should or shouldn't be doing. But no matter what, no matter what you, your upbringing was, to your point, anybody listening, today, today, just take the word can't out of your vocabulary. When I raised my children, that was the one four-letter word. Of course, there was a bunch of other ones I didn't want them to use. But they knew the one four-letter word that I didn't want to hear was can't. Tell me you don't want to do it. Tell me you've never done it before. That may be true. Tell me you may never do it, no matter how hard you try. That you, it, Maybe it never will happen. But don't tell me it can't, that you can't do it. Because that word can't will kill you. It will kill your dreams. It will kill, it will. It will dictate what you even try to do. There's this, there's this little parable that is passed around. Nobody knows if it's true or not, um, but I'm gonna tell it the way it was told to teach a lesson. The, the parable says that if you put some, some, um, some fleas into a jar, but leave the, lid, leave, leave the lid off, they'll jump out of the jar. But then if you put them in the jar and you put a lid on it, they'll jump and they'll hit the lid. And eventually they realize that there's a lid. Then you could take the lid off and they won't jump any higher than that lid was because they've been trained to obey that limitation even though that limitation is gone. Now, nobody knows if that's really true and I've never put fleas in a jar, but the lesson is that, and we do this to children and, and, and to black people and to women, you know, the, you know, the groups that are told, no, you can only go with this so far and that's not a black thing and your know, girls don't do that. And what you're doing, you're putting lids on people's potential and then training them not to go beyond that barrier so that even when you remove the barrier, nobody, they won't try because they already have it in their head. No, I'm not supposed to do that. I'm a brother from Brooklyn. I'm the brother from the Bronx. I'm, I'm, from, I'm, I'm a girl. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm too short. I'm too tall. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm, I got brown eyes, not blue eyes. You know, all those things that society puts around us and says, this, you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do this. And I would not be who I am today doing the things that I do, both in my personal life or professional life, 
if I paid attention to any of that. So I'm always telling people, don't pay attention to that. Decide what you want to do, that you really want to do. And if you really want to do it, who cares how, how long it takes? That's right. If you really want to do it, you're going to enjoy trying, even if you never get there. And, and if I could circle back to Mr. Graves, and people ask me what it's like to work at Black Enterprise, and it's still true to this day. The reason why we get so much done at Black Enterprise, and we're at our largest, we never had more than 130 people at our company competing against the Forbes and the fortunes of the world that may have hundreds of people working on their magazine and doing things, but way more money to work with. When you work for Mr. Graves, the assumption is we can do anything. Then we can get point, we, then we can get past wondering if we can do it and start getting into what should we do and what shouldn't we do. We skip a whole step by not getting caught up in, you think we can do it? Yep. No, there's something, we can do it. Now let's figure out what's worth doing and what's not worth doing. Not wasting time figuring out whether we can do it. So what applies to the culture of black enterprise is also how I approach my life. I don't spend time wondering if I can do it. I start straight from the assumption, if I want to do it, I can do it. Now let me decide if I really want to do it. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.